Without any further ado, please give a very warm renegade welcome to my pal, my associate, the title king, Kevin Thatcher. Thank you, Double B. Good morning, everyone. So I have 20 minutes, and then I'm going to get thrown off the stage. I'm going to try something unique today. But first, I wanted to just start with a little motivation. How many of you are here because you need a little bit more motivation, maybe some money, maybe a little bit better of a mindset? Admit it. Those of you that aren't raising your hand, you're probably lying, okay? Because everyone in this room, myself included, always needs motivation. You always need to be inspired. You always need some better direction, maybe a different idea, and that's why you're here. So what does it take to become a renegade? Why was I invited here and others aren't? You're here to learn, right? So this is what I'm here to teach you today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my business. Hopefully you'll learn something. Hopefully you'll get some motivation this whole weekend. Hopefully you'll become more successful. Because there was a perfect example of someone who's a licensed realtor who's making 3% on every deal and he said, I want more. I said, let's teach you how we can get you more. Bring you in the office, let's teach you how you can not only be the realtor helping your investor find that deal, but why not become the investor yourself by that deal? He says, well, I don't have the money. I said, great, David does. True story? We set him up with David. David lent him on his first deal. How many are you doing now? He's on his third deal. I believe you have two closings on Monday in my office. So give him a round of applause. That's a renegade, folks. That's a renegade in real estate. That's someone who is taking the business by the horns and running with it and making a lot of money, doing what everyone else wishes they can do because that fear factor will paralyze you. So we're going to have a little fun. I'm going to split you up into two teams. And my presentation is not going to be this boring PowerPoint slide. I'm going to try and educate you a little bit. But we're going to have a little fun. You ready to have some fun? Okay, so let's see how this goes. This is brand new, by the way. How many of you have watched Family Feud? Who wants to play? See, fear, guys, fear. Fear caused you not to raise your hand and say you want to play, right? The paris paralysis of analysis. So what we are going to do is split you up into two teams, Team A and Team B. You got it? Yeah. So I asked 100 investors this question. What types of names are used to title real estate? Who's got an answer? Raise your hand. First hand up was Team A. Land Trust. How many of you think Land Trust is on there? Is it first? I don't know. Let's find out. So I have the answers here. Okay, so. Guess who wins? Team A. Give them a round of applause. So Team A, you're going to go. Second answer, someone want to raise their hand. Top, remember, top five answers are on the board. The first type of entity that people buy real estate is a Florida land trust. We'll talk more about that in a minute. You on the red shirt. LLC. An LLC. How many of you know what an LLC is? An LLC is a Florida, or oh, could be Florida, but a limited liability company. Again, a very good tool to purchase real estate. How many of you have used an LLC to purchase real estate? How many of you have used an LLC to purchase more than one house with the same LLC? Okay, those of you need to be careful, and I believe there's a speaker later that's going to talk about it, but be very careful titling real estate in the same LLC. We have a lot of disasters that happen with cross-contamination of liens, liens on one attached to another one. Use a land trust, keep it separate. So what number do you think LLC is? Close. Limited liability company, number three. Give yourselves a round of applause, team A. Next, who has another answer? Team B can't answer, you're not ready for the steal. This is still team's A chance. Someone raise their hand. And an S Corp, does everyone know what an S Corp is? S Corp, corporation is number two. Give yourselves a round of applause. So what's the difference? You said LLC and S Corp, what's the difference? Does anyone know? 
Well, an S-corp has shareholders, right? President, vice president, secretary, treasurer, you have a, the amount of shares. So if you have 100 shares, four owners, you each have how many shares? 25. 25, right? Four owners, 100 shares, 25 apiece. Make sense? What about an LLC? What does an LLC have? Members, members right? Members. Very, very big difference. And I'm not going to steal the thunder of Frank because I know he will talk about it. He covers this in depth. How do I know? That's how I learned from listening to Frank and talking about trusts, LLCs, and corporations. So team A, team B, get ready for the steal, because this may be a tough one. Team A, I need one, one or two more options of how you can purchase real estate. Mr. John. Sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship is on there, but not one of the top five. Anyone else? You don't have a steal yet. They got to get three X's, right? Family feud? Personal name. Personal name. Give them a round of applause. That is on there. Number five, so you got one more. Number four, who knows what it is? You have two more options. Anyone else? And by the way, personal name for investment property, never, ever, 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 ever what? Never do it. Never, do it. never buy real estate in your own name, except if it's your own primary residence, and then you may need to use number four, which is? Partnership. Not a partnership, two strikes. Anyone else? A trust, give her a round of applause. So 10 people said a revocable family trust. That is how you will title real estate in your own name. Your homesteaded property, you will have an attorney somewhere between twelve to $2,500 set up some type of revocable family trust and you will title real estate using that entity. Does that make sense? So you never hold title in what? Your own personal name. Again, consult with your attorney, consult with your accountant, but I'm telling you, I've bought many, many, many properties over years and it's a mistake. Everyone like that game? Yeah. Who wants to play again? All right, well, guess whose turn it is? Team B, we're gonna give you a chance here. So I have one more, well, I have two more, but we'll see how we do on time. Everyone see the question. What are the benefits of using what we talked about, which was number one, a Florida land trust? How many of you have used a land trust before to purchase real estate? A couple of people, I know there's some investors in the room that learned from us how to use it, why to use it, and now use it in their business. So number one, you guys can raise your hands. Yes, ma'am? Privacy. privacy. Who thinks privacy is on there? Yeah. What do you think, right? Yeah. I think that is number one. Give her a round of applause. Okay, who else has an answer? The top five answers? That is a very good reason, which we talked about why you would not own property in the same, uh, but it's not. That's, that's more higher level land trust education. So it's not on there from your standard 100 investors, but a very, very, very powerful reason to use it, cross contamination of liens. Who else? That's one strike. Mr. Joe. You can file it right in your home office. You know, it doesn't have to be recorded. Okay. Well, that's a good one. But yes, you can file it. I'm going to include that one with number four, how easy it is. No fees, low cost to set it up. You don't need an attorney to set up a land trust. You can join David's club. How many of you are BRIC members? How many of you are not BRIC members? Hopefully you will become BRIC members because I know he gives a land trust in his document discs and, and Frank will be here later teaching about how trusts work and David uses it on his own property. So again, very, very, very powerful. Three more answers on the board with one strike for team B. Team A, get ready for the steal. Asset protection, yes. Asset protection is a reason to use trust, but it's not one of the top five. Two strikes to Team B. You guys getting ready? Not yet. Anyone else? Limited liability. Limited liability. Again, it is a reason, but it is not one of the top five. So three strikes for Team B. Team A, are you ready for the steal to take the win? Assignability. Assignability. Again, another very good reason. <laughs> So the question is the number five reasons to use a Florida land trust. Okay, so we're gonna talk about them. What do you think number two is? Hopefully something that never happens to you, but if you were to pass away, it helps avoid probate. Does that make sense, yes or yes? So if you pass away, wouldn't you want your heirs to get your property without having to go to court and go through a whole probate process? That's the reason you would use it. Number two, avoids probate. Number three. It's a pass-through vehicle for holding real estate. 
in a trust, it passes through to what's called the what? Beneficiary, thank you, Phil. The beneficiary, here's Phil, another assassin that just bought a ton of real estate. How many properties do you have now? Uh, I got five. A lot, five. And he's flipping deals. That's five rentals and he's flipping. Using trusts, using conventional financing, using private money, came to a seminar just like this, learned what he needs to know. And he uses the land trust. How do I know? Because he closes with us. All right, last one. Let's talk about it. Avoids deed restrictions. See, the number one reason people say a lot of times they can't purchase short sales is why? Deed restrictions. You have a 30-day, 90-day uh, price restriction. Using a land trust is a vehicle to purchase property and avoid deed restrictions because land trusts are assignable. You can resign as a trustee. You can assign the beneficial interest in a trust, and it's not an actual sale of the property. It's not recorded in public records. You don't see a transfer of interest. You're basically selling the entity. Same thing with using a corporation or a uh, limited liability company. You can sell the company and the property is an asset of the company. Does that make sense? So for those of you that think you can't buy short sales because there's a deed restriction and you can't hold the property because you don't have the money, there's your way how. Does that make sense? Okay, I have seven minutes left, so how many of you want to play one more round? Yeah. Okay. You all having fun? Yeah. And then we'll give away that fancy drone. By the way, I've lost about four or five drones, and then I invested in one of these, and guess what? I still have it, so it's pretty cool. This drone is amazing. This drone will literally hover over you, and you can just stand there and just watch it sit in front of you. It's got a compass, a GPS, and a camera, so it's pretty cool. All right, so last question. We're gonna go back now to team A and team B. You guys can all play this one. What types of searches do title companies do when buying real estate? I wanna see how many of you get the first one. Title. title search, how many of you think number one is a title search? You do. It's gonna be number two. Isn't that weird, right? My business is in the business of providing title insurance and title searches, but out of 100 people polled, almost 50 Almost 50% said something else, not a title search. But this is my business, right? So what is a title search real quick? A title search is where we search public records for any liens, judgments, mortgages, bankruptcies, anything that would cause a cloud to the legal description of the property. Does it make sense? Yes or yes? yes. Number one is what? O&E report. No, O&E report is not on here. O&E report, though, is a very good question. Is a search you would do to find the full history of the property. It's typically a non-insurable product, so you wouldn't use that when you're buying real estate with title insurance. You'd use that more at like the tax deed sale. Make sense? So that'll cover pretty much everything that here is an owner and encumbrance report. Tell you who owns the property and what liens are on the property. Next. Liens. How many of you think lien search is on the list? Number one. So people think liens because what is clouding title? Liens. A mortgage is a lien on property. So they think a lien search is usually what people say is what you search. So a lien search is not actually a title search. A lien search is not necessarily searching for liens. Does that make sense? Understand that when title companies will not pull a lien search, a lot of clients say, well, why wouldn't you? A lot of REO companies do not pull lien searches because a lot of what's uncovered in a lien search is not covered by title insurance. Okay, so you need to be very careful when purchasing bank owned properties and you're not using your own title company to represent your interest because they will not pull a lien search. What shows up on a lien search? Not liens, what shows up? Code enforcement violations. Not liens, but violations. Not covered by title insurance. Utility bills, right? Water, tenant water, owner water, because utility department will not turn the water off on the house, but they will accumulate a five, six, seven thousand dollar bill. I've seen double digit bills. I've seen thirteen, fourteen thousand dollar water bills. Okay, so it exists, and you have to negotiate them down. What else? Permits. Okay, so you said something very important. Repeat that. Open permits, right? But not only open permits, but what? Expired. Expired permits, folks. That's the number one issue that causes problems. Open permits are typically easy to have to close. Expired permits mean someone pulled the permit, 
could have been for a new roof 10 years ago and never closed it, never had it inspected. So now you have to hire an engineer, you have to have an inspector go out. What does the inspector do when he gets to the house? Looks at everything else that's wrong in that house. Oh, you put in a new ceiling fan without a permit? Eh. Oh, you put in a new kitchen, a new bathroom, you closed in the utility room, you put in a new electrical service. So by having a code enforcement enforce, uh, officer come to the house could cause you great problems, not for just the issue at hand. It could cause you a lot of problems. So we have three more answers on the board. What else does a title company search for when you are buying your next piece of real estate? Tax liens. Is that what you said? Tax liens. Okay, so tax liens are on here. We do a tax search. Okay, so if you go to our website and you look up uh, our videos on our website, you will see we were on, featured on NBC for a tax search because we called the tax collector because it showed that taxes were due. And we called them and they say, no, taxes are not due. I said, well, your website says they're due. And they said, well, our website is wrong. Oh, okay. Send me a letter, please, just so I cover myself and my client. And guess what? They sent us a letter. Taxes were paid in full. Guess what happened two years later? The house got sold a tax deed. And when we called the tax collector and said, we have a letter that says they were paid, they said the letter was a mistake. <laughs> so your website's a mistake, the letter's a mistake, what do we do? They said pay them. And unfortunately, as a title company, we had to pay them. We were featured on NBC because Ann Gannon, the tax collector in Palm Beach County, said to our attorney and to the news, basically, and her head attorney said, you can sue me and we will pay it but you're gonna spend 250 an hour suing me and I'm on retainer. He's basically on salary. So he said, you might as well just pay it because it was a $6,000 tax bill and it would have cost me a lot more to fight it out in court. So tax search is something that a title company does. You wanna search their website and like we do, you wanna call them to verify and as long as the information matches, hopefully you're okay. But if not, title insurance will cover you. So we have two more real quick on here and then we're out of time. What else do we search? Condo or HOA? Good answer. We do search for, for HOA estoppel letters, but it's not on here. I am running out of time, so I am going to tell you the last two that we search. We do a name search, what's called an OFAC search, checking for criminals, checking for money launderers. We check your name, make sure you're clean in the history, not for money laundering. And the last one, which I thought was very weird, which we don't actually do, an internet search. So you probably wouldn't have got that one, but it's just an internet search. Someone said, oh, you search the internet for titles. No, that's not what we do. We have software and services. So I'm going to wrap up. I have one minute left here before we do the drone giveaway. How many of you enjoyed yourselves? Yeah. Thank you. How many of you are going to be the next renegade in real estate? Okay. So we do an educational series. It's called a vlog. Who knows what a vlog is? A video blog. We do a video blog. We do it every week. It's called what? It's on Tuesday, so it's called Title Tuesdays. Tuesdays. I know, Joe, you watch it. Title Tuesdays. How many of you want to get Title Tuesdays? It's all educational, whether it's land trusts, talking about events, talking about anything in the industry. So what you need to do is write this down on the paper that David told you to write down. You're going to text the word title rate, one word, title, T-I-T-L-E, R-A-T-E. Everyone write that down. You're going to text the word title rate to this five digit number. It's called a short code. It will work on your phone. Text it to 22828. So you open up a new text. You put 22828 as the number you're going to send it to and you put the word title rate and you'll get a message back from me that says just send me your email address. So this way you subscribe. I don't want to collect your business cards. You subscribe and now you can join our list and you're able to see. We don't blast out garbage, we blast out Title Tuesdays, that's about it. And if you, you all enjoy yourselves? Thank you very much. You have tape measures in the back, if you all got them on the way in. If you didn't, I'm gonna leave them. Please make sure you grab them, they're pretty cool tape measures. And now, thank you, David. We are going to give the drone away. Yeah.